Hello, podcast listeners. First up, thank you so much for listening to and supporting the podcast. We really, really appreciate it. We love doing it and we love getting the amazing comments in from all of you. Just a quick reminder that the Your Success book is out now on amazon.co.uk and amazon.com. It's currently available in both paperback and Kindle and the audio book will be coming out in 2019. Head to tiny.cc forward slash your book to check it out. That's T-I-N-Y dot C-C forward slash your book to check it out. Now on with the podcast. Welcome to Your Success Podcast. We give you actionable insights and stories behind real life success wherever you go. Here are your hosts, Angelos and Mo. Welcome to Your Success Podcast. I'm Mo. And I'm Angelos. And today, uh, we're really excited to be talking about overwhelm and how to not be overwhelmed with overwhelm. Indeed. So, Angelos, yes. why don't you kick us off with what is overwhelm? Overwhelm is where you just can't seem to find a way forward. There's, yeah. Everything is on you. You know, all the pressures, you can't see the wood for the trees. You're just in this massive spinning circle and you can't seem to find a way out or a way of managing yeah. all of these multiple tasks or multiple pressures yeah. or whatever it is. And it causes paralysis mm. because you just can't see a way forward. Yeah. So this could be personal life or your business life as well or wherever. Um, and it's time pressure. So people wanting your time. So friends, family, work colleagues, things like that. It could be money pressures, financial pressures, indeed. Yeah. Um, lots of bills coming in this yeah. month. You don't know how your your wage is going to cover yeah. it, and instead of dealing with it or seeing a way forward or working out how yeah. you can do it, you just go internal and you just feel completely overwhelmed with it. And um, maybe weight of expectation as well. Yeah. So having uh, people like expecting a lot of you of things that you might have either not done before or you know don't feel that confident in doing. Um, what else? Is there any other kind of sort of overwhelm you could feel? Oh, there's so many things. I mean, there's not enough. It, it sort of manifests in a lot of time in like not enough hours in the day, doesn't it? When you're sort of like, I've got such a big to do list and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Only today I was saying to my wife, crisis to do list is never going to end. Yeah. And it really won't. Yeah, but it it's won't. dealing yeah, with it. Yeah. You know, you have to accept the reality that if you run a business, you the chances are you probably yeah. will always have something happening behind the scenes yeah. that needs your attention. But I think probably the time one is the one that we can yeah. focus on a little bit yeah. now, Mo. I mean, can you give some examples of where, you know, you personally, your time is just completely overwhelmed with everyone wanting a part of Mo? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's every day, basically, um, for, for different reasons. And, and I think the key thing with it is whatever you're overwhelmed with, We'll talk about de- how, we'll talk about dealing mechanisms and things like that as we go through, but it's your fault. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What was that noise? Uh, don't be overwhelmed, mate. <laughs> stay, stay focused on this um, podcast. So, um, dealing with um, what was I saying? Sorry, that's really put me off. Right. Okay. Let, let's start again. So we were, we were talking about time <laughs> yeah. and how everyone's trying to. Oh yeah, that's it. Got it. Sorry. Back on track. The key thing we're talking about coping mechanisms, but the key thing is, it's your fault. So whatever whatever is happening in your life, whatever you're overwhelmed with, is completely your fault. So, um, and the reason I say that is because whatever's happening in your life is a, a consequence of all the things that you've done. So the decisions you've made. Um, the investments you've made, the people you work with, um, your family, your friends, all of those things. Um, so the first point is sort of a realisation that you're in control of it and actually it's, some, it's what you've manifested over that period, period um, up to that point. So if you're in financial difficulties, it's your fault. And it's not to say that because it's like pointing the finger, it's like your fault, but it's like you, you've caused it, but you've got the power to then change it as well. Yeah. Um, so you can't, there's no point in like sort of, moaning about it and whining about it. you've just got to take the control of actually being able to change it but i find that that's quite easy for someone to say you know mm. or respect mode but yeah. when you're in that position mm. when you're in that deep dark yeah. well and you can't see mm. the wood for the trees and all you see is this great overwhelm you have yeah. problems with bills or time yeah. or expectations yeah. or whatever it is it's really easy for others to say yeah just i think the point, i think the point of it is that if you don't accept that you 
you've got if you don't take ownership for it which is Mm -hmm. the first step before we go into coping then if you don't take ownership for it you then you're relinquishing control and you then start blaming it on external factors and as soon as you start blaming external factors for things you then relinquish the control over the ability to change it so if you say oh it's the government's fault or it's the economy's fault or it's my ex-wife's fault or whatever you've got then no control to um, actually make the changes and you adopt the victim mentality yeah, exactly. which doesn't empower you yeah. in order to take control back yeah. of the situation and to start making improvements in your life yep. and prevent this from happening so again you could say oh you know oh it's the economy's fault or you could say well actually no the economy tanked at a time and i wasn't protected and i didn't do certain things I didn't have certain things in place so what i'm going to do now is make sure that i'm prepared the next time a similar thing happens and then okay you can't do anything about the past but you can definitely control how you approach things going forward. Um, but I think the key, the key thing for me in terms of dealing with overwhelm is just looking at what, what is overwhelming you and it quite often helps to sort of write everything down. Um, I, last time I felt I was feeling really overwhelmed, just like so much work to do and things like that. I just sort of did one of those, is it called a spider diagram? Could be, yeah. Spider diagram, I think it is, where you sort of, I just put me in the middle and then I was like, right, I've got to do these things over here. And then there was some sub things that broke off that. So like, like a task or an activity and then some sub tasks and then wrote them down. And I've got them all logged in various sort of systems and things that I, that I use, but actually just writing it down, the sort of cathartic process of just writing down what you've got to do, crossing things off as you go, seeing how things were related to each other, but more importantly, having everything down on a page really just made me realize, well, actually this bit isn't that important. I could probably do it. Um, yeah. Okay, you, you go, okay. and I'm going to just go so, and turn so the alarm off. It's quite interesting what you say there, Mo. Um, uh, yeah, Mo. Basically, what you've just said is very true in the sense that um, yeah, I also have to deal with various um, bits and bobs with running my events business, my property business, etc., etc. And the most important thing I find is writing down what are the time drains um, in the businesses. So, for example, um, with the events business, I write down every single step that I have to do. Um, how, even if it's a really insignificant thing, such as sending out a mailing list shot, for example, that takes 20 minutes to do. You write down those 20 minute tasks. Then you add it up all over a week or a month and you, you identify certain key things that you could maybe um, you know, outsource to other people so that it doesn't overwhelm you so much. You know, it doesn't just ride on one person. You build up your team. And I find that's a really good way of um, reducing that level of overwhelm, reducing the, the <laughs> workload that you have just on one person. What do you think? Like? I think I just overcome a lot of overwhelm. <laughs> um. I was just saying about writing down every single task that I do with yeah. the events business, with yeah, the business, yeah. uh, the property business, mm. and then you can add up that time. Yeah. Um, and then maybe you can outsource some of it yeah, to definitely. other people to help reduce that level of yeah. overwhelm. Also, I think that's really important, but also looking at the uh, importance or the ROI of each of those tasks. So you might have uh, you might have 10 tasks, but actually 20%, you know, the whole 80-20 rule, 20% of those tasks might actually account for 80% of your progress or, or, or progression that day. So maybe you can rather than looking at it as 10 tasks, you look at two must-dos today, Mm -hmm. three must-dos tomorrow, and then one the day after, and then a few that actually you don't need to do and you've put down because at the time you wrote them, you thought that was what you needed to do, but now you've got a bit more more information. So looking at prioritisation of what the activities are um, as well can, can really help because... You know, like you said earlier, you're never you, you're never going to get to the end of your to do list. You've just got to um, work out what the most important things are to do in that day, um, and and get those done, and then go to bed knowing that actually you've done the best you can that day, and yeah. anything else is um, anything else would be a bonus. Let me give you so for the just to prove that we keep this real. Yeah, um, the alarms just went off in the building. <laughs> That's why Mo had to pop out there for a second. But um, one thing that I find um, really really good is. Um, identifying all these time draining yep. issues and then just seeing if technology can help yep. as well to automate it to mm-hmm. take the pressure off um so for example um in mailchimp so i send out lots of emails um to my list to do with the events business yep. but i can rather than writing down that whole email every time which can take a long time yep. you you replicate what you sent last week you tweak it so that yep. saves a lot of time 
And then you can book four or five weeks in advance um, very quickly in the space of an hour. And then you don't need to worry about that task rather than it going and leading up to this big thing. Because most of the issue is in your mind. Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. reality is, you know, you procrastinate and you make it into this big problem. Whereas if you can automate and schedule things in advance, yep. it can reduce that level of overwhelm as well. Definitely. There's so many systems and ways that you can actually um, just really make your life easier and, and, and get those really important things done really quickly. I think the other thing as well about our overwhelm was that we were talking about earlier. It was it's overwhelm is actually a really good thing, I think, mm -hmm. um, because a lot of time it comes as a result of not really knowing having a sort of a bit of a fear of the unknown and not knowing all of the answers straight away and things like that and I think if you want to be in a position where you're growing personally and professionally and, and things like that you want to maybe not always because it can be quite stressful being in a state of constant overwhelm but periodically you want to be pushing yourself to a point where you are feeling a, bit, a little bit overwhelmed because actually once you've got through that when you come out the other side you're going to be We'll talk about like another level but you're going to be you're going to have stepped up and if you can if you can then step up to that next level next time you come to do that's the thing that you were doing before that you're overwhelmed by um you won't be over overwhelmed by it because you've already got the experience of actually i've already done that once and it wasn't that bad so sometimes it's it's worth in just bearing in mind that the pressure and the stress on you yeah. is actually a good way um for you to grow yeah, yeah and yeah, it's definitely. not always to be feared yeah um or to be rejected so yeah yeah, tell us about the lobster. Yeah, example. so there's a there's a good. Um, I'll I'll let everyone um, look at the the video on YouTube. It's uh, I what did I type in lobster rabbi? I, I think it's a rabbi talking about the example of a lobster, and um, the the shell of a lobster is a fixed sort of rigid hard size, and um, the lobster will grow and then will start to feel really stressed and pained when it gets to that point. And actually, what it does is it goes and crawls under a rock to protect itself gets rid of that shell and gets a bigger one that it can then grow into. Um, and actually, it's at the point that the pressure really builds again between the lobster and the shell and it starts to feel painful. And that's what overwhelm feels like, that that's the point that they know that you need to grow into the next shell and that's what you need to be. So that's a sort of metaphor for life. But if he was a human, he would go to the doctor, yeah. he yeah. would be prescribed Valium or whatever yeah. else yeah. to try and relieve yeah. the pain. Yeah. Whereas sometimes, you know, it can be a very good growth mechanism. It's... It's a fine line between being overly stressed and over yeah. overwhelmed mm -hmm. and just being in that zone where you grow outside of your comfort yeah. zone. But one last thing I want to raise, mm -hmm. Mo, is um, sometimes you don't need to be overwhelmed. You yeah. can ask for help. Yeah, uh, so, for example, if, let's say, in our businesses we do lots of property refurbs yeah. and whatever else, you compare that to someone who's just starting out yep. investing or wants to buy the first home mm -hmm. and they need to do a full refurb on their house, it can be really overwhelming. You yeah. don't know which trade you need to go with. You don't know how to do it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Whereas you and I are maybe 10 years ahead in the process where we've got yeah. systems in place and it's a fairly routine thing for us. Yeah. If that person then approaches us and asks us for help, that's no problem at all. You know, we have systems in place to yeah. help them. Whereas you know, it's always great to look ahead yeah. at someone who can help you um, to reduce that because, level of overwhelm. Because what you think is a massive issue and what you're overwhelmed by, if you go to someone, like you say, a few years ahead of you in the process, that will be nothing to them. And the same, and that's why we've talked about in the podcast and in the book as well, to always have mentors and things like that that are ahead of you because you'll go to them with your issues and the things that you're feeling overwhelmed by and they'll be like, it's not even an issue to them. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, they'll give you the reasons yes, why and yeah. the tools of how you can overcome it. Because, because they'll know a lot more like what's the worst that could happen with it they'll know you'll think something happens like 50 or 60 percent of the time so you're really worried about it happening but then they'll say well actually they've been doing something for 20 years and it only happens once out of a thousand and you just don't really know because you've not been there you don't know how often how likely a negative yeah. thing's gonna and happen. like we said a lot of it's in your mind you know yeah. the things that you worry about probably nine times out of ten it's not going to happen the way yeah. that you worry about it so don't waste your time thinking about it think about what you have in what you have in your control yeah. Um, you said something really interesting to me um, oh, a few thanks, months mate. ago. Mo. Yes, <laughs> just one, <laughs> once just in a one year. thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, uh, just ass assumptions yeah. and how dangerous they are yeah. to a business, especially. And how do you reduce those level of yeah. assumptions? And just go out there and try and minimize and do your research and be proactive and find out is the assumption actually going to be true? Yeah. You know, are you over um, analyzing it? Are you 
playing out in your mind the yeah. worst case scenario when the reality is it probably won't be like that and you can do a lot of research you can be proactive and work out what is more likely to happen yeah and i thought that was a really good observation yeah someone someone told me that once that the yeah the risks in in any kind of business or property kind of project um the risks are in the assumptions so mm-hmm. you you have a list of your assumptions assumptions so you expect that you know you're going to sell the units for this price or the construction is going to cost this or you're going to have to you know um, spend this much on section 106 or whatever it is and you can then um, start to increase the uh, likelihood of or your certainty with the project by decreasing the sort of um, the, the spread on those assumptions so like worst case and best case spread um, and you can do that through using professionals and using people that you um, that have been through the process before um, and as when you minimize the assumptions you then start to minimize the risk and you actually then start to build your confidence as well yeah um which is i think is good for both life and also for, for business and property and stuff as well absolutely so yeah so i think overwhelm so what have we talked about overwhelm um it's i think it's a good thing because actually it um allows you to grow allows you to grow and makes you realize that you don't know everything it also keeps you humble mm-hmm. um so if you sort of if you never experience overwhelm, you might get a bit cocky and you might get a bit complacent. But actually, if you get a bit of overwhelm sometimes, you're a bit worried about things. Actually, you think, actually, I don't know everything, which means I'm going to surround myself with the right people. I'm going to get the right advice and I'm going to um, not bite off more than I can chew and things like that. Take well, it in steps. Also allows you to take ownership of, of yeah. the problem. Yeah, and take see, ownership of the problem. And see yeah. how you got to that yeah. entire point and see ways in the future to avoid getting yeah. in that situation. There are ways of managing it using technology or yep. automation or writing down and mm-hmm. working out why. Prioritizing, yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. is your time suddenly being overwhelmed? Yeah. And also seeking advice from mentors or people who are ahead of you in the journey yeah. and, and gaining their experience. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Well, cool. we, want, we want to know your, yeah, your thoughts on overwhelm. Are you feeling overwhelmed and how are you dealing with it? How do you react when your alarm goes off? Uh, when you're trying to record a podcast. <laughs> do you get overwhelmed? Do you get overwhelmed? Or, or do you, you just leave Anglos to do everything? Yeah. <laughs> really well. I should have just stood out there for like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and just see, talking to myself. See you when you run out of things to say. Yeah. Start talking about Star Trek or something. Oh, God. <laughs> God help us I'll all. come running back in and like, <laughs> shut up. Or just Brilliant. go and switch your mic off. Yeah. So reach out to us. <laughs> yep, um, absolutely. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yep. YouTube, the whole lot. Or yep. email us at hello at yoursuccesspodcast.com. Yep. Um, we love getting all the feedback from you and we Definitely. love engaging with everyone. We had some really nice feedback, didn't we, the other day about yeah, the book we, and the we podcast did, and stuff. Um, from Dr. Rasheen. Yeah. Um, really, really nice to hear some really positive feedback. Yep. Um, this experienced professional guy, he read our book, he did all the toolkit yep. and he wrote in and he said that it helped him put things into perspective yep. and felt really encouraged by it. Yep. So thank you very much for the feedback. We really do appreciate everyone yeah, that writes in. Yep. Um, so yeah, I've been Anglos and I've been Mo and see you again on the next exciting episode of Your Success Podcast You have been listening to Your Success Podcast Click subscribe for more incredible content More details can be found at www.yoursuccesspodcast.com